Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to take another look at the open source project AutoMapper. AutoMapper is a convention-based object-to-object mapper which allows you to map data from disparate object models back and forth between each other with very little effort. In the previous episode we took an introductory look at how to set up and use AutoMapper and in this episode we're going to continue where we left off but take it one step further and focus on how AutoMapper uses projection to determine how to map your transformations. We're also going to take a look at how to flatten out object models uh, during transformation. This is the AutoMapper website. For the source for the AutoMapper that we're using in today's episode was pulled out of the AutoMapper source tree as of today. So it's current as of RC1. Now everything you see today may change in the future. So if you are looking at this and then you realize that they're on 2.0 for, for example, it is possible that the syntax used in 1.0 is different than any future releases. If you'd like to check out the earlier episode, you can do so right here. Uh, this is the episode where we did the introductory overview of AutoMapper and how to set up and configure AutoMapper. So in order to use AutoMapper, all you have to do is grab the source or the binaries from the AutoMapper website and reference them inside your project, and then you're done. That's all you have to do in terms of referencing assemblies. There's not a lot of them. You have to reference just the single one. In our example today, I'm going to talk about how we can take an episode object, which in my example here has a name and description, and we'll add in more of this in a few minutes uh, in terms of authors and sponsors and things like that, and flatten it into an episode view model. This would be the view model maybe I'd use to pass across the wire, use for my display mechanism, whatever the case may be. Um, but at the end of the day, I need to map from one object model to the other, and this is what I'm going to do. So the first thing I want is I want to set up so I can map from one to the other. So how do I go about doing that? Well, if, if you remember back from the previous episode, we took a look at how you need to create your mapping. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new class, and I'm going to call this mapping. And inside of mapping, I'm going to have a static method called setup mapping. And my setup mapping class is going to be very, very straightforward. I'm going to do mapper. Mapper is the uh, object that you use from AutoMapper that will set up and create your mappings. I'm going to do create mapping. And we're going to do it from episode, and we're going to have it project itself into the episode view model. What we're doing here is this is your from, your source, and this is your destination. And we're going to just leave it at that. I'm going to set up my create mapping. And this is all the wiring that you have to do very basic scenarios. So up here to do so, to actually get it working, I just do mapping dot setup mapping, and then I'm done. I can actually start doing real code. So let's go ahead and set up a very simple episode to do transformation with. Now, to set up my mapping and actually have AutoMapper do its auto magic stuff and do its mapping, I want to use the mapper.map. And I need to tell it I'm coming from an episode to an episode view model. I want to pass in the object that contains my data. And I'm done. Very, very simple, very straightforward. So let's put a breakpoint here. Let's run this bad boy. If I F10 over this, you'll see that, sure enough, it maps my things for me. Very simple, very straightforward. But you know what? I understand that in most scenarios, your names aren't always going to match. And your object model isn't always going to be a one-for-one. -one. You're going to have maybe a, a hierarchy on one side, and you want to flatten it out on the other side. Or you want to project from you know one name into you know multiple fields into a single field, things of that nature. Let's give ourselves a little bit more realistic example. So let's go back up to our episode source DTO. And I'm going to put in here an author, an author, and we're going to do this as a sponsor. And so now my episode that I'm going to retrieve from the data, database, for example, that needs to be transformed now has author and episode, or sponsor attached to it. And what I want to do down here is I want to say, you know, prop call this string
So I want to project that into a property called author name and a property called sponsor name. So how do I go about doing that? Well, let's see if I leave my mapping alone, what happens. Let's see if, if AutoMapper is smart enough to you can figure, figure everything out based on conventions. But first, it might actually help if I provide some uh, data for it to map. So let's run this. If I step over this, if I hover over it, you'll see that name and description is populated, but sponsor name is also populated, but author name is not. Well, let's look at two things here. One, and this is pretty cool. Sponsor name was automatically mapped. And if I look at my episode, I just have an object here called sponsor. And if I bounce over to the declaration of sponsor, you'll see it has a single property called name. On my view model, I simply have a property called sponsor name. The way AutoMapper works is if while doing flattening, it comes across a reference object that you are trying to map and says, okay, so I have sponsor name. If I can break that apart via cam uh, camel casing into an object, sponsor, and its correlating property, name, let's go and stuff that value into sponsor name property during my mapping. If you can't, it'll leave it as null or empty or whatever the default for that particular data type is. So we need to figure out how to map our author name. Well, with, with AutoMapper, that's pretty straightforward again. So what I can do to extend this is I can say for member, and I'm going to say the first is my destination, so I'm going to say D dot author name. I want to map this, and I'm just using standard syntax here for uh, for uh, Auto mapper. I want to map it from. So where am I? Where am I source? Do I want to map it from? Well, in our case here, I want to take the first name and last name and put them together. So let's do string dot format. Help if I put the right syntax here. So I'm going to say that when I am mapping for member author name, let's go and walk my my object model and go into the author object. And let's pull out first name, last name. Now let's run this again. Now you'll see author name is populated appropriately. Description name, sponsor name is all populated appropriately, which is pretty snazzy, pretty slick. Um, now, one last thing I want to take a look at here is mapper dot assert configuration is valid. And all this will do here is basically make sure all your mappings match up and you, you've set everything up appropriately. This is just a little good to have at the end of your, your setup routines, just so you can make sure that you, know, you get some runtime issues early on rather than late on during your mapping process. So in this episode, we took a look at how we can map just basically letting the convention mechanism within AutoMapper take our object model and flatten it to an extent and push it into our destination model. And then we also took a look at how we can do some tweaking, some slight tweaking so that we can map maybe, you know, a couple properties into a single property during our mapping process. In later episodes, we'll take a look at some more advanced features of AutoMapper, but I hope you learned something. Until next time.